Hi, so in this problem, I solved the whole thing out and I think everyone's at this stage. Uh, I think the confusion's happening that students are expecting this to be the answer. That is the intermediate work. From this, because it's an and problem, you can say that there's no overlap, so the answer would be uh, no solution because there's no overlap anywhere. Now, how would you graph no solution as an answer on the number line. You would say, that's my number line. There's negative 10 here and seven here. These were numbers or points of interest. How would you indicate that there is no solution anywhere? You cannot shade this region. You cannot shade this region. You cannot shade this region because that would mean that those are the solutions. So you have to leave those regions blank. How do you indicate that negative 10 is not a solution either? Well, you'd have to put an open circle above it. How do you indicate that seven is not a solution either? You'd have to put an open circle above it. So the correct answer for this problem should be B. Uh, I don't know if that's what you said in the video or that's what you said in the discussion or not, but it needs to be B. It cannot be A because this is saying there's some solutions here to the left of seven and some solutions here to the right of negative 10. A is obviously out because seven is not less than negative 10. These numbers are in the wrong spot. It cannot be C because this is saying that there are some solutions between negative 10 and seven. So they're saying that that's where the overlap is. There is no overlap in the answers that we got. So it can't be C. It cannot be D because this is saying no solutions here, no solutions in the middle, no solutions at the end, but because the negative 10 and seven are filled in, it's saying that those are the two numbers that are solutions. Well, if our answer is no solution, nothing can be a solution, not negative 10, not positive seven. And as to why B is the correct answer, well, this is saying nothing is shaded here, so there's no solutions on this side, there's no solutions on this side, there's no solutions on this side. Negative 10 is not a solution because there's an open circle there. Seven is not a solution because there's an open circle there. So I think, again, the, the mistake or the confusion lies in the fact that students are expecting this to be the answer. This is part of your work. The final answer is no solution. And how would you indicate that no solution on a graph? You would indicate something like this. Uh, similarly, let's say that you had a problem where you had, let's say, five here, eight here, open circle going in this direction, closed circle going in this direction and there were an AND problem. With an AND problem, the answer would be five to eight. Oops, that's not an eight. Eight, closed bracket at eight, and open parentheses at five. Because at eight, there is overlap. At five, there is not an overlap. The final answer that you would see should be five, eight, open circle at five, closed circle at eight. Let me use a different color shaded everything in the middle. Because this is saying all the numbers in the middle are solutions. The number eight is a solution, but the number five is not a solution. So that's what you would be graphing. Now, had this been an or problem, for or, you're asking where am I covered from the rain? So if there's rain falling all over the place, you're covered everywhere. So the solution would be negative infinity to infinity how would we graph that? Well, the points of interest are five and eight. Does the solution include this region? Yes, it does, so I have to shade it. So everything to the left is shaded. Does the solution contain this region? Yes, it does, because the solution is negative infinity to infinity. Every number is a solution, so that region is shaded. Does the solution contain this region? Yes, it does. Now, does the final solution contain the number eight? Yes, it does, because eight is in that interval. So I'd have to make a solid dot at eight. Does the final answer include the number five? Yes, because five is also in that interval. All numbers are solutions. So I would have to indicate that with a solid dot. Now, just because five was not a solution here does not mean that five is not a solution to the inequality or to the compound inequality. Five was not a solution to one of the two inequalities. But is it a solution to the or problem? Yes. 
So I, I think that, again, the mistake or the confusion is lying in that students are expecting this to be an open circle. It can't be an open circle because all real numbers are solutions. If you make that an open circle, then you're saying five is not a solution. So hopefully this helps clarify the, the, the issue that folks might be experiencing.